Good morning. Yes, I do wear glasses sometimes. <laughs> well, we shall see. <clears throat> Anybody gets on here, they'll look at that and think, who is that guy with those glasses on? I don't know him. His Facebook has been hijacked. <laughs> All right. Well, a few of you coming on there. <clears throat> Betty, glad you're on there. Good to see you and, and your hubby yesterday. <clears throat> and, uh, Tom, glad you're on here. Hope you're feeling okay these days. You and George are doing okay, I hope. So... We should probably talk here before too long just to get caught up, right? <clears throat> Betty, glad you're on here too. So, good morning. Here we are. It's uh, Thursday, August 11th. <clears throat> so, I put it on the uh, church's Facebook <clears throat> page, but I'll put it out here for those of you who are part of Platte Valley Baptist Church. So, sorry, that's one of the great privileges of being in a local church like Platte Valley. None, none better. But <clears throat> someone contacted me and told me that if there is anyone in our church family <clears throat> that wants to homeschool, but they have been hindered by uh, the cost of the curriculum, that the source will pay for that curriculum for you. So if you are uh, uh, willing to make that commitment and homeschool your kids and uh, the cost of the curriculum is what stops you from doing that, then you need to contact me and I will uh, be happy to uh, help out with that. So uh, get you either in touch with the person or if they want to continue to stay Anonymous will get it worked out, but I know that uh, this person will be good uh, to the word. So uh, so if you're a part of the church family and you want to homeschool, then um, I think it's a great thing. I do. I have zero regrets that we homeschool our kids and um, people can throw all kinds of stuff at you <clears throat> about socialization programs, blah, yada, yada, yada. But um, you guys know Tyler uh, does quite well where he's working now, uh, married, uh, loves the Lord, serving the Lord, taking care of his wife and, and um, walking the way he ought to. And, and I would say is very successful in God's eyes. I know that you guys know Thane. Thane has, uh, not only did he graduate homeschool, uh, he graduated with a bachelor's degree. He graduated with a master's degree and has done quite well in uh, serving the Lord also and very well equipped, can express himself uh, just like Tyler. And, um, and then Kareth graduated with a bachelor's degree. So uh, the the world, those are the world's commendations, um, but they want to make you think that homeschoolers are just a bunch of backwoods hillbillies that uh, uh, know nothing, and uh, you, you're going to find out if you take the leap and you homeschool that you're, first, you, the first thing you're going to find out is how much time is wasted at public school. Uh, you can get your kids through the curriculum every day in probably half the time as what it is in a public school. And you can set your schedule to where uh, we always would start early in August and then November came around during deer season. We would take a week off during deer season and uh, go back to Missouri and go deer hunting and uh, took that time off. We, uh, we're able to uh, just do a lot of different things. You know, one one year our kids, um, we decided that they they wanted to get done early, so we homeschooled 
uh, six days a week, went through Saturday, and uh, they were done the first day of April of that year. So you can, there, there's a lot of things that you can do, and uh, you, you, you'll find out that uh, you, you'll think you're not equipped, but you are, and uh, it's just a big time commitment is the biggest thing, but uh, it's your children, and so uh, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I know we have several on here that in, in our church family that are teachers, and they're great teachers. I'm not knocking them at all, but it uh, doesn't matter. Um, there's not a better teacher than your par than the parents, and um, so and the way the world is going, uh, the way things are, the curriculum that's being taught in our public schools these days, the, uh, the socialization that you don't want your kids to have, um, you can, uh, and, and you don't have to be an isolationist with your kids. That, that's a fallacy also. And, uh, you, you can find that, uh, your kids get plenty of socialization. As a matter of fact, uh, you'll find out if you're involved in the church family at all, you're, you're very busy during the week, uh, even at the church. And so uh, your kids get lots of socialization and they get socialization with the kind of kids that are headed the same direction that your kids are and can be a great help. And so anyway, that's the plug for uh, homeschoolers today. And um, we... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's just not the same school it was when when I was a kid, and uh, and I and it's not for the better. And I'm not down in the good teachers, but there's a lot of bad teachers. There's a lot of crazy families out there that are sending their kids, and and uh, a lot of socialization you just don't want to have with your kids. Uh, and so, anyway, that's the plug and. Uh, don't ever think that you are inadequate as a parent. There's no one more adequate to uh, teach your children than you. And so, um, anyway, that's a that's a plug for the homeschoolers. And and besides that, uh, you can do homeschool defense, <laughs> like we did. And uh, uh, yeah, so. Anyway, that's enough of that. I, I uh, we better get started in this. I, I politically, I was trying to think of of uh, what was going on. Um, I, I did see that the Episcopal Church. So even that that would include the one that's in in uh, Morgan. I don't know if there's an Episcopal Church here in Brush or not, but uh, the leaders of the Episcopal Church have come out and said that they endorse. Uh, transgenderism and they uh, wholeheartedly endorse the uh, surgeries to um, that that those who want to change their identity they are in total support of that and um, so obviously it doesn't matter what the Bible says we're going to do whatever uh, we want to do is what the Episcopal Church is saying, and you can write them off. They've been written off for years. They've been so wildly liberal, but um, I, I just don't know why you call yourself Christian um, when you just don't believe the Bible. Uh, I mean, we, we uh, you know, one of the, the you, you see that, uh, I think it's the Church of Antioch that in, in uh, Acts that was first called Christians, and they did that, and they called them Christians in a derogatory manner because it meant Christ followers. And so um, if you say you're a Christian, you ought to be a Christ follower, right? Which means you ought to do what the Bible says. And, and uh, uh, we could just really truly care less what culture says and, and uh, what culture is trying to push us to do. Uh, we just need to do what the Bible says. So Let's do what the Bible says and quit worrying about what the rest of the world thinks about us and just walk the walk that God has called us to walk. And that brings me to Nehemiah. That's where I'm at in my Old Testament readings. And uh, if you don't know this, Nehemiah is uh, probably my favorite book. And and he ranks right there in one of my favorite people in in uh, all of the biblical history 
uh, he and, and King David are my two favorite, and and uh, I I love their their leadership. I, I just love what uh, uh, they they did as leaders, and and both of them were much the same in uh, many areas. And I, I think maybe uh, David was a little bit more impulsive uh, sometimes in in things that he did. He's somewhat. Not quite like Peter, but I always picture him as a little bit more impulsive in the things that you read. Uh, and, and you have far more about him than you do Nehemiah. But uh, a powerful leader, and one of the main reasons I believe that he was a powerful leader is that he was right there with his men all the time. And he never expected them to do something that that uh, he wouldn't do himself, and that was shown quite often. And uh, finally, there was a point when he had gotten older, when he was almost killed by a giant, that uh, they came to his rescue, killed the giant, and told him that, uh, you know, King, we want you to stay back and let us do the fighting. And But he was right there, and his powerful leadership that that you see. And then Nehemiah, you, you find that he's much the same way. He he was a cupbearer, we know, in, in chapter one, which means that he was the wine taster for the king. He would drink of uh, whatever was offered him to, to drink and to eat, and he would taste of that to make sure it wasn't poisonous. And uh, so he would die before the king would. And um, and I'm sure that they became very close. And and uh, but anyway, that's what he was. And he heard that uh, he had heard a report that the the gates of Jerusalem were knocked down, the walls were knocked down, and and there was all this desolation. And first of all, that reminds me too of what sin does in our lives if we don't deal with it. And. and the the children of Judah for many years denied Christ and and walked away from the obedience in in God's word and what God had told them to do and they were taken captive and and they they lost their identity they lost their country they lost uh, everything that that uh, represented who they were and seventy years later God is giving that back and and um, well, Nehemiah hears about the first group that had gone back there and uh, had started working on the temple. And then finally they did get the temple built because of a couple of the prophets came in and got them going. And, and uh, then we know that Ezra had gone back and had uh, reestablished worship and, and was doing that. And, and, um, and then and what a mess that was, you know, we, we talked about that some yesterday and, and, uh, hard. I mean, sin is hard and the way of the transgressor is hard. It tells us, and, and we just don't want to be that way. And, and, uh, let, let's be tender to, to God's calling and tender to God's will in our lives. And, and so, so Nehemiah now he comes back and, and, uh, he goes to the king and, and he doesn't, you know, tell the king, hey, we need to send someone down there. He says, I want to go. I'm the, I'm the one. I, I need to, you know, here I am, Lord, send I. And, and so that, that's the attitude that he had. And he said, I'm going to go. And, and so he gets permission to go and, and he prepares things and he, and he takes some men with him and, and they go and, and, um, this is the thing that I find interesting in chapter three. Uh, he gets he gets men organized uh, to first of all rebuild the gates. He said we need the gates built first, and so uh, he he gets all the groups organized, and everybody is involved. I mean he he's the kind of leader that he got everybody involved except one small group, and this is what it says in in uh, verse five that but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. And the only ones that didn't uh, uh, set to, to fix things were the, the nobles, the, the political leaders of the day, the, the wealthy ones that had, had come in and, and uh, 
uh, honestly just uh, were just not righteous people at all, in, in my opinion. And, and uh, I just see that a good leader is one that is, is going to be involved. And, you, you know, we, um, I, I don't know, I think that if you expect people to volunteer, you ought to be a volunteer yourself. If you expect people to work hard or to, to take care of things around the church, then you ought to work hard at taking care of things around the church. You ought to work hard at the ministry. You ought to, if you are going to uh, be the kind of pastor that, that God uses to build a church that, and you want people that are, that are hardworking, honest people, then you better be the kind of leader that's hardworking and honest yourself. And, and your work may be a little different than theirs in that somebody, you, you know, maybe a, a, you know, I, I don't know, a, a farmer who's out there working on machinery, you know, irrigating and, and those kinds of things. You may have someone that's a factory worker that goes in and does factory work. You may have somebody that's a mechanic but they're all hardworking. They're all honest, and and you need to be the same way. And and we need to lead the way. And and um, I just I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time with leaders that uh, put themselves up above everybody else and and expect everybody else to do the work while they sit there and just oversee it. And I'm just not that kind. Sorry, I'm I'm not. Uh, uh, I want to be involved and and uh, help and. And I, I know I can't do everything and I can't be everywhere, but um, you better be out there and put yourself out there with the people and, and be a help. Uh, and, and, and really, I know this gets me in trouble, but military leadership is, is truly just the opposite of biblical leadership. Biblical leadership is servant leadership. And you, look at the men Look at so many of the men that in the military that really made history, that were tremendous leaders, and they were they were men who were right there with their fighting men, and they were right there with them the whole time, and right smack in the middle of the battle, and, and uh, they fought right next to their own men, and those were the men that made history. It's not the ones that uh, you know, set up on the, the hill somewhere, uh, telling everybody what they should do. They were right there with them showing that, yeah, we need to be doing this. And so anyway, that's, that's a big part of today's, I, I just love Nehemiah. I just read the first three chapters today and, um, I have a, a bunch of messages in Nehemiah and I like to preach it to, uh, young men that are, that are in ministry or, I'm telling you, if you're in some kind of leadership position in your job, whatever it is, you need to read Nehemiah and, and ask the Lord to show you the leadership qualities of, of Nehemiah. And, and it'll help you in your job, wherever you are. And uh, um, it's just powerful. So anyway, and then secondly, I was, um, I was reading in Psalm 31. And, you know, sometimes we find ourselves kind of... Uh, getting down in a, in a dark hole at times and, uh, just, uh, whether you're dealing with sickness and it wears you out, whether you are, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's sin in your life that is overwhelming in your life and you need to get it out of your life. Or maybe it's just depression, anxiety, worries. I, I don't know, anger, bitterness, whatever it is, but it kind of pulls you down in a hole and, and, I was reading Psalm 31, and, and I just want to read some of these, these verses to you. And, and it, it's just a, a good reminder of uh, uh, how to come up out of that. And, and then to remember certain things that God is doing. In verse 9, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul in my belly. Uh, so here he's writing, David writes that, you know, he, he, he's just pouring out his heart to God. And he says, I'm full of grief right now. There's, there's so much sadness and, 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 and it's throughout my entire body. It's overwhelming to me. And, and for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. Look, you're talking about a man who, who lost three, three sons. I mean, he buried three sons. I, and, 
uh, he, uh, and I'm sure that he buried many good friends. You know, the thing that we need to remember, we, we read the account of David's mighty men, those 30 some mighty men, but we don't have an account of every one of their lives. We, we might want to think that all of those mighty men lived to be a ripe old age and, and died an old man, but I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't believe that. I think he buried many of those mighty men along the way who perished while they were defending their nation. And, and so David, not only did he bury family members, but he, he buried uh, uh, many good friends and, and he writes this and, and he says, I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear to my acquaintance, they that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee. O Lord, I said, thou art my God. That, that's, how we, that's how we dig ourselves up out of things. If you're dealing with grief or anxiety, read yourself out of that valley. And, and, and trust and remember who it is that that has you and that's taking care of you and that promises that he's not going to leave you or forsake you. And, and my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Uh, I mean, it just goes on through that. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O oh, love the Lord, all ye as saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. How, how good is that promise? You, you know, we, we, we see some crazy things that that are going on in our world today. And, and uh, you know, I talked to a, a police officer uh, this week and, and who's been in law enforcement a long time. And he said, you know, it used to be that Thursdays you'd start um, gearing up and then Friday and Saturday, you know, was wild nights. And then uh, Sunday was, uh, everybody was trying to recover to, to go back to work on Monday. So Sunday was always quiet. And he said, it, nothing's quiet anymore. Every night is crazy, you know, and the police officers used to tease about it being a full moon. And, and now it's just like every day is a full moon, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, uh, but our, you know, our society changes, but God doesn't. And he's right there. And, and really, he doesn't, he doesn't want us to change either when it comes to our faith. Be steadfast in that and walk with him and, and find him to be uh, faithful and, and you be faithful along the way. And God's got us. He's got us. It's all okay. So it's a good day today. It's Thursday. And Lord willing, be back on here tomorrow. And uh, just hope that you guys have a great day today. And yeah, maybe uh, tomorrow I'll have my uh, contacts back in. We'll see. So God bless you guys. Have a great day.